Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I am going to unbox this Sony XH95 Full Row Local Dimming LED LCD television. And I thought that I would do it outside for a change. Because, first of all, I missed my Joe Weeks session this morning, so I need to get some exercise in the system. And also, I don't know how's the weather in your part of the world, but since the lockdown in the UK, the weather here has been brilliant largely, which is really unusual for this part of the country, so let's take advantage of it. I love trying new things, so let's get this unboxing done. This coverage is sponsored by Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086 for the best prices and expert advice for TVs, AV and Hi-Fi. So that was a workout and a bit, all because I didn't bother to RTFM. It got a bit windy towards the end and there were styrofoam and plastic bags flying around everywhere, so I had to run around trying to grab them. It was utter carnage. I mean, between Joe Wicks and doing this, I know which one I prefer, the glamour. But I've finished setting up this Sony XH95 Full Array Local Dimming LED LCD television, and I believe in the USA, this TV is also marketed as the Bravia X950H. So let's get into the user menu and see what's new. So if I can pull up the settings menu, Go into display and sound, click on picture, and the first thing that will greet you is that Sony has implemented a new graphical user interface. I think I've been briefed about this at CES 2020 as well. Seems like a lifetime ago, given what's going on. But yes, there will be a graphic and also some explanation to try and describe the function of the settings in question. So let's go through the picture modes. The standard picture mode is the default and then if we go to cinema, this would be recommended for watching films at home. I'm just reading the description by the way. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is what I think. You know, I'm just at living at the moment. But if we go into game mode, this normally would be the picture preset that would provide the lowest input lag for playing fast reflex games and graphics probably more suitable for computer graphic user if you are planning to use this TV it's probably quite large to be used as the monitor but probably you can get 444 chroma out of it and photo and custom custom I believe would be the most accurate picture preset for use in a dark room but Let's say if you decide to get this TV calibrated, or indeed, given that it's unlikely that many calibrators will be going out around calibrating, if you choose to do it yourself, you can get the Kalman software, which will probably unlock two further picture modes, the Custom 4 Pro 1 and Custom 4 Pro 2. But let's get back to the cinema mode, and I will continue explaining all the other settings. So light sensor will try and adjust the light output on screen depending on the ambient light that is detected in the room. Brightness, if we click on the brightness sub menu, you can first of all see that the first option would be brightness. This adjust the backlight or light output of the television. So if you actually lower it, it will become darker generally, and if you increase it, it will become brighter. Let's set it back to the default of 35, and contrast will determine the digital white level. Gamma affects how the input signal is being translated on screen, so if you lower it, it might be more suitable for consumption in a dark room, whereas you know if you increase it then you will make the blacks come out 
faster and shadow detail will become clearer in a brighter room. Black level, adjust the video black level. So let's say if you reduce it by too much, you'll be crushing some shadow detail, but if you increase it too much, you'll be raising the black level unnecessarily without any increase in shadow detail. So normally, calibrators or video enthusiasts use a pluch pattern to adjust the black level correctly for each set. Black adjust is basically just a near black gamma manipulation to try and increase the perceived contrast. Advanced contrast enhancer would be equivalent to dynamic contrast on most other brands. Auto local dimming, this is a full real local dimming set and there are various strengths of local dimming algorithm being implemented on this TV. So depending on whether it's low, medium or high, depending on the content and whether it is in SDR or HDR, the TV will be doing different things. And also I believe that you can actually switch it off as well. But it is unlikely that you will spend this much money on a full real local dimming set and end up switching it off. So let's leave it on the default of medium and extend the dynamic range. In SDR, this would probably produce some sort of SDR to HDR conversion effect. But for HDR, I believe that this is necessary to achieve the highest peak brightness that this TV is capable of. And again, I have to do more testing to see what ramifications each of these settings will have. We go to the color sub page and the first item would be color which adjusts the colors globally. Hue rotates the tint in a global manner. By global, I mean it affects all the colors. Color temperature, this would be a grayscale preset and you can choose from expert one, expert two, and also warm, neutral, and cool. And the cooler you go, the bluer the color temperature will be, but we'll leave it on expert one, which was the default here. Live color, this would be increasing the saturation and luminance, expanding the color gamut basically, but it may end up being inaccurate for either SDR or HDR content. So just to be wary of it, if you choose to use this, it may produce a pleasing effect, but in the end, it may not be accurate. Let's go into the clarity submenu. Sharpness applies H enhancement. Reality creation, this is Sony's concoction of video processing that serves to enhance the detail without trying to produce too much ringing artifact. And you can choose to use it or turn it off. And then random noise reduction would be a temporal filter from the description to lower the amount of noise in the image. And then if we go to digital noise reduction, this may be a spatial filter, which is similar to what other brands would call impact noise reduction to try and combat mosquito noise and other impact compression artifacts. Smoke gradation, this is a decontouring filter. And I think Sony was the first one to try and implement this sort of 14-bit super bit mapping processing to try and smooth out the gradation but I think a few other brands may have caught on as well but I always like to use this in the low setting because I don't think it destroy as much detail as what other brands are doing but again if you are purist you may want to choose to turn this off completely and if we go into motion Motion has always been the strength of Sony and under the motion flow setting, there are the options of off, custom and auto. And if we go into custom, smoothness will apply motion interpolation to smooth out any judder and reduce motion blurring. It's a combination unlike other brands where they have the blur and the judder settings, Sony just combine both for both low frame rate and high frame rate into one single setting, which if I'm honest, I think they could improve upon. Clearness would be triggering some sort of backlight scanning or black frame insertion to reduce motion blurring. 
film mode, again, I think from previous years, Sony has distilled it to an on and off toggle, but I believe that the on toggle may be causing some deinterlacing detection problem, let's say with mixed edit programs in 50 Hz countries. So this is again one thing that I need to check out this year. Video signal. This would allow you to manually enable HDR10 mode, HLG mode, or just turn off HDR altogether and force every content to be displayed in SDR. But as always, auto is always the best setting. And color space, again, you can force BT709, which is the standard for high definition content. DCI color space, Adobe RGB for any photo retouching that you are going to do on this TV or BT2020 which is the standard for UHD or ultra high definition material. Auto it, advanced color temperature. First of all we have the two point white balance controls which is R gain, green gain, blue gain, R bias, green bias and blue bias. The gain controls will affect the brighter portion of the image the bias controls will affect the darker portion of the image. And I really like the diagram that they have drawn here. I will have to pay more attention and analyze this whether it is correct, but it certainly looks quite pretty. And then we can go into the 10 point white balance controls. I believe that if you use Kalman and unlock the custom for Pro 1 and custom for Pro 2 modes, then you may be able to gain access to a 20 point white balance controls. But again, I'll have to test that when I get the necessary update of the software from portrait displays in terms of Kalman. So for each 10% video stimulus interval here, so you can see it goes up to 10, you can adjust the RGB balance. I really love the charts, even though it may not be representative of you know what's going on, but you know how I'll, I'll have to pass judgment when I have time to analyze it more. Per color adjustment, this is Sony's color management system or CMS, and you can adjust the colors, the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, and the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow. And this is the HSL based color management system. By that I mean you can adjust the hue. Hue just basically rotates the color. Saturation will increase or decrease the saturation of the color, whereas brightness, lightness will adjust the luminance of the color. So that concludes my walkthrough in terms of the picture settings of this Sony XH95 or X950H. I don't think there are many differences to last year's in terms of the picture settings, but again, I'll have to spend more time testing and reviewing this TV before I can come to any sort of meaningful conclusion. If you have any questions about this TV or anything else that you want to ask, just leave a comment in the YouTube section below. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.